Students, in this class, I would be writing a JavaScript code to show how to get the factors of a trinomial. So, in this case, we are talking about a trinomial of the following form, ax squared positive bx positive c. In fact, it's a quadratic equation. I can safely say it's a quadratic expression because the equation, you need this particular quantity to be equated to zero. So, I'm just taking a quadratic expression and I would like to get the factors because my intention is to write this particular term in factor form. So in other words, I would like to have something of this form, say x positive p times x positive q. So this is my objective. In that case, I need to extract the values of p and q so that I can write this trinomial as a factored form. Now for that, I am exclusively considering a comma b comma c to be greater than zero and that a is equal to one. In other words, the leading coefficient is taken to be as one. Now with that in mind, I have given you an examples of the following system or following expressions that can occur. So the first one is x squared positive 17 x positive 72. This is a trinomial and uh, so on and so forth. So all of these things are possible uh, candidates for this particular application. In fact, our application can handle all of these things. So without any further ado, let me go to VS Code. So this is my VS Code. I've already added a folder called Solving Trinomial and I've created a folder called JS there and I also created the index file. So let me just go to the index file and I will place the exclamatory mark and press the tab title and then come to the body and include the script. I'm going to place the script inside the JS folder and the file.js so just copy this file name and go to the JS folder, right click, create a new file, just paste that and you get file. Now foremost, I would like to have the coefficient of, so I declare a variable coefficient of x then I will prompt we need this okay Please enter the coefficient of the X term now this is in string format so you need to convert it into passing and then you go up here Just copy that. Next, we need the constant term. Constant term. Convert this sentence. Please enter the constant term. So, we have got the quotient of x term. Over here. Now to get the constant term. And after we have got this, I want to know the number of devices that are existing for the constant term. So let me declare a variable there. So counter is equal to zero. I need to create the array for placing in all the devices. So an array is created. After that, I need to have to run a for loop to catch all of the devices of the constant term. So it's going to be for let i is equal to, it has to start from 1 and then i should be less than the constant term. And we increment the value of i and then we should check for a condition. We should perform a conditional check here. So if 
the constant term modulo division with i if it is equal to 0 then you increase the counter by 1 you might be saying it's 1 but actually I'm going to increase it by 2 because we need to cater to the negative factors also I would say negative devices also right so this is for the negative devices I'm declaring a variable negative devices is equal to negative 1 multiplied with i so a variable has to be declared so over here to get the number of fact number of devices and over here negative devices to catch the negative devices also so now we need to push the values we need to push the devices into the array so for that we got the array there so devices dot push first I'll push the negative devices and then devices I push the positive devices so that's going to be just I so come out of the loop and you print this out so document dot write I put a h3 tag and then say total devices total devices is equal to counter right that has to be there then the next one is we need to get the devices so I'll place a break here devices are I'll just say equal to I need to place those things in a parenthesis and then the array right the array is devices and place a double quote and a space and a parenthesis that's it so this one will take care of our factors so let me open up okay so you can see that please enter the coefficient say I enter 17 that's the first question I showed you and then the constant 72 so clearly you can see the number of devices for that is 22 right now apparently we have not seen 72 so 72 should also be featured there so for that we need to place a equal to sign there and save it and go back and you refresh it you will see 72 years 17 and 72 you see that 72 is now featured because the number divides itself right so that is how we capture the factors but that is not the end of the story we need to get the polynomial in factored form so for that what I'm going to do I'm going to declare the two variables so number one I'm declaring and number two I'm declaring then I would like to run a for loop for let i is equal to zero i less than the array devices so this is the array we created and I need to get the length and this is how we check it we need to have two for loops so this is one for and this is the second for loop let j is equal to i plus one i plus one and j is less than devices dot length and j is incremented so this is the second for loop so in this case we have to give a condition okay we perform the condition to see if the sum of the numbers 
equals the coefficient of x. That's the basic thing. So if divisors of i added with divisors of j, if it is equals to the coefficient of x, then what do we do? I assign the values to the number. So I say number 1 is equal to divisors of i, number 2 is equal to divisors of j. So I am factoring it out. Right, so I've got two roots, but I'm writing it in factored form. So that is fine, but we need to get it printed. So document dot write. I give a a break, and then probably h three or h four tag, and then factored form. Factored form is equal to. So we start a parenthesis, we place the x. Of course, you might be wondering well, how come we are placing the we are placing x plus because we are looking into variables or I mean polynomials or I would say the quadratic equation of the form ax squared positive bx plus c. That's the reason I'm placing it. So then move out, okay, and then place the number one. Num number that should be number one. Number one. And then you place a comma and you place the other parenthesis. And then you place a comma, you open the next parenthesis. Probably you place the x and plus, you place a comma and number 2. And place the double quote. Okay, semicolon. So this is how it looks. And let me run it. So I'm going to state 17 and I'm going to say 72. So clearly you can see factored form x positive 8 times x positive 9. Now let me go and check the next one. Uh, I've given you a list of uh, quadratic equation. I'm going to check the second one. That's x squared positive 9 x positive 20. So coefficient of x is 9. 20 is a constant term, so x positive 4, x positive 5, fair enough. Now let me go and check the next one, the second one. So quotient of x is 5, the constant term is 6, so fantastic, x positive 2, x positive 5. So let me go and check the next one, which is x squared positive 11x. So quotient of x is uh, x squared positive 11x positive 28, 11 and the next one is uh, 28, constant term. So that's fair enough you see that exactly so let me go and check the next one the last example in fact I've got one more probably I will uh, just stop with this so it's working so 7 is a quotient of x and uh, 10 is a constant term so lovely so that is the end of this particular application we will meet again with another beautiful question thank you students like share and subscribe to our channel